السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Hello my dear friends This is Dr. Huda Today is an English lesson for grade 4 In شاء الله we are going to read a very nice story from Journeys Volume 4 Let's start رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لغضة من لساني يفقه قولي بسم الله The title of our story today is called The World According to Humphrey by Betty G. Burney and selection illustrated by Terry Farrell Jittens Essential question How would your day differ without TV? Meet the author Betty G. Burney Betty G. Burney wrote her first book titled The Teddy Bear in the Woods when she was 7 years old Now she is the author of more than 25 children's books including several others in the Humphrey series. Although Bernie criticizes television in this selection, she has written more than 200 episodes of TV programs such as Madeline and Fraggle Rock. Meet the illustrator Terry Farrell Jittens. Terry Farrell Jittens might not be an artist today if she had watched as much TV as the family in this selection does. She didn't have a TV in the house very often when she was growing up. So she drew a lot. Illustrating this selection has reminded her how important it is to unplug, use her imagination, and get outside to see the beauty of nature. Target vocabulary. Appreciate, blaring, combination, promptly, introduce, nocturnal, feats, effort, suggest, racket. Target skill. Theme. Explain the lesson or message in a work of fiction. Target strategy. Summarize. Briefly retell important parts of the story in your own words. Genre. A fantasy. A fantasy is a story with details that could not happen but seem real. Set a purpose. Before reading, set a purpose based on the genre and what you want to find out. The kids in Mrs. Brisbane's class love taking care of their hamster, Humphrey. The weekends are especially fun because one of them takes Humphrey home. This weekend, the lucky student is AJ. The bus let us off close to AJ's house. It was a two-story old house with a big porch. As soon as I entered, I got a warm welcome from AJ's mom, his younger brother Ty, his little sister Dealey, and his baby brother Bo. Anthony James, introduce us to your little friend, his mom said greeting us. Anthony James, everybody at school called AJ by his initials or just age. This is Humphrey, he answered. Hello, Humphrey, said Mrs. Thomas. So how was your day, Anthony? Lousy. Garth kept shooting rubber bands at me. He won't leave me alone. But you two used to be friends, his mother said. Used to be, said age, until he, he turned into a jerk. Mom patted her son on the shoulder. Well, you've got the whole weekend to get over it. Now, take Humphrey into the den and get him settled. Mrs. Brisbane called him, lower your voice, your voice, AJ, because AJ always talked extra loud in class. I soon noticed that everybody at AJ's house talked extra loud. They had to because in the background the TV was always blaring. Now, every house I've been in so far has had a TV and I've enjoyed some of the shows I have seen. There is one channel that has nothing but the most frightening shows about wild animals attacking one another. I mean wild, like tigers and bears and hippopotamuses. Gee, I hope that's not on our vocabulary test in the near future. Those shows make me appreciate the protection of a nice cage, as long as the lock does not quite lock. There is another channel that only has people in funny-looking clothes, dancing and singing in very strange places. It makes me glad that I had a fur coat and don't have to figure out what to wear every day. Mostly, I like the cartoon shows. Sometimes they have mice and rabbits and other interesting rodents, although I've never seen a hamster show. Yet. Anyway... The difference at the Thomas' house is that the television is on all the time. There is a TV on a table across from a big comfy couch and a big comfy chair and someone's almost always sitting there watching. I know because they put my cage down on the floor next to the couch. 
I had a very good view of the TV. I couldn't always hear the TV though because AJ's mother had a radio in the kitchen which was blaring most of the time while she cooked or did crossword puzzles or talked on the phone. No matter what she did, the radio was always on. When AJ's dad came home from work, he plopped down on the couch and watched TV while he played with the baby. Then, AJ and Ty blocked in some video games and played while dad watched. Dee listened to the radio with her mom and danced around the kitchen. When it was time for dinner, the whole family took plates and sat in the den so they could watch TV while they ate. Then, they watched TV some more, they made popcorn and kept watching. Finally, the kids went to bed. The baby first, then Dee and later Ty and AJ. After they were all in their rooms, Mr. and Mrs. Thomas kept watching TV and ate some ice cream. Later, Mrs. Thomas, Thomas yawned loudly. I've had it, Charlie. I'm going to bed and I suggest you do too, she said. But Mr. Thomas just kept on watching or at least he kept on sitting there until he fell asleep on the couch. I ended up watching the rest of the wrestling match without him. Stop and think, author's craft. An author often uses idioms, phrase, uh, idioms, phrases that mean something different than the meaning of the words but put together. Mrs. Thomas says, I've had it, which means she's tired. As you continue reading, identify other idioms the characters use and their meanings. Unfortunately, the wrestler I was rooting for, Thor of Glore, lost. Finally, Mr. Thomas woke up, yawned, flicked off the TV and went upstairs to bed. Peace at last. But the quiet only lasted about 10 minutes. Soon, Mom brought Bo downstairs and gave him a bottle while she watched TV. When Bo finally fell asleep, Mrs. Thomas yawned and flicked off the TV. Blessed relief. Five minutes later, Mr. Thomas returned. Sorry, hamster, can't sleep, he mumbled to me as he flicked on the remote, the remote. He watched and watched and then dozed off again. But the TV stayed on, leaving me no choice but to watch a string of commercials for car waxes, weight-reducing programs, exercise machines, and Red Hot Harmonica Classics. The combination of being nocturnal and being bombarded with sight and sound kept me wide awake. At the crack of dawn, Dee Lee tiptoed into the room, dragging her doll by its hair and switched to a cartoon show about princesses. She watched another show about cats and dogs. Scary! Then Mr. Thomas woke up and wanted to check some sports, score, some sports scores. Mrs. Thomas handed him the baby and his bottle and soon the older boys switched over to video games and their parents watched them play. It was loud, 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 but the Thomases didn't seem to notice. What do you want for breakfast? Mom shouted. What? Dad shouted louder. What do you want for breakfast? Mom yelled. Toaster waffles. Dad yelled louder. I can't hear the TV. Ty hollered, turning up the volume. Do you want juice? Mom screamed. Can't hear you. Dad responded. And so it went. With each new question, the sound on, on the TV would be turned up higher and higher until it was positively deafening. Then, Mom switched on her radio. The Thomases were, were a perfectly nice family, but I could tell it was going to be a very long and noisy weekend unless I came up with a plan. So I spun on my wheel for a while to help me think, and I thought and thought and thought some more. And then it came, the big idea. I probably, I probably would have come up with it sooner if I could have heard myself think. Around noon, the Thomases were all watching the football game on TV. Or rather, Mr. Thomas was watching the football game on TV while AJ and Ty shouted questions at him. Mrs. Thomas was in the kitchen listening to the radio and talking on the phone. Dee Lee played peekaboo with the baby in the cozy chair. No one was watching me, so I carefully opened the lock that does not lock on my cage and made a quick exit. 
Naturally, no one could hear me skittering across the floor as I, as I made my way around the outside of the room. Over to the space behind the TV cabinet, then with great effort I managed to pull out the plug, one of the most difficult feats of my life. The TV went silent, beautifully, blissfully, silently silent. So, so silent I was afraid to move. I waited behind the cabinet, frozen. The Thomases, the Thomases stared at the TV screen as the picture slowly went dark. Ty, did you hit that remote? Mr. Thomas asked. Nah, it's under the table. Anthony, go turn that thing on again, Mr. Thomas said. AJ jumped up and hit the power button on the TV. Nothing happened. It's broken, he exclaimed. Mrs. Thomas rushed in from the kitchen. What happened? Mr. Thomas explained that the TV had gone off and they discussed how old it was, five years, whether it had a guarantee, no one knew, and if Mr. Thomas could fix it, he couldn't. Everything was fine and it went off just like that. I guess we'd better take it in to get fixed, Mr. Thomas said. How long will it take? Dilly asked in a whiny voice. I don't know, her dad replied. How much will it cost? Mrs. Thomas asked. Oh, yeah, her husband said. I forgot. We're a little low on funds right now. The baby began to cry. I thought the rest of the family might start crying too. Well, I, g I get paid next Friday, dad said. AJ jumped up and waved his hands. That's a whole week away. I'm going to grandma's house. Her TV works, said Ty. Me too, Dilly chimed in. Grandma's got her bridge club over the there tonight, mom said. I know, said dad. Let's go to a movie. Do you know how much it costs to go to a movie? Mom asked. Besides, we can't take the baby. Oh... They whined and pickered for a quite a while. They got so loud, I managed to scamper back to my cage unnoticed. Then, I guess I dozed off. Remember, I had hardly had a wink of sleep since I'd arrived. The bickering was a nice soothing background after all the tracks. I was only half asleep when the squabbling changed. But there is nothing to do, Dilly whined. Her father chuckled. Nothing to do, girl. My brothers and I used to spend weekends at my grandma's house and she never had a TV. Wouldn't allow it. What did you do? I, AJ asked. Oh, we were busy every minute, he recalled. We played cards and board games and word games and we dug in her garden and played tag. He chuckled, he chuckled again. A lot of times we just sat on the porch and talked. My, gran my grandma... My grandma, she could talk. What do you talk about? I wondered. Oh, she'd tell us stories about her growing up, about funny things like the time her uncle was waking, was walking in his sleep and went to church in his pajamas. Mrs. Thomas gasped. Oh, go on now, Charlie. I'm just telling you what she told us. He woke up in the middle of the service, looked down and there he was in his blue and white striped pajamas. I let out a squeak of surprise and the kids all giggled. Stop and think. Summarize. Summarize the events of the story that had led to Mr. Thomas's story about his grandma. Make sure that your summary maintains the meaning and order of the events. Then, Mrs. Thomas told the story about a girl in her class who came to school in her slippers by accident one day. Yes, the fuzzy kind, she explained with a big smile. They talked and talked and dad got out some cards and they played a game called Crazy Eights and another one called Pig, where they put their fingers on their noses and laughed like hyenas. When Bo fussed, they took turns jiggling him on their knees. After a while, Mrs. Thomas gasped, Goodness sakes, it's an hour past your bedtimes. The children all groaned and asked if they could play cards tomorrow and in a few minutes all the Thomases had gone to bed and it was quite, quite, quiet for, for the first time since I'd arrived. Early in the morning, Ty, 
D. Lee and A. J. raced downstairs and played crazy eights. Later, they ran outside and threw a football around the yard. The Thomases were having breakfast with Bo when the phone rang. Mr. Thomas talked for a few minutes, mostly saying, Aha, uh -huh, that's fine. When he hung up, he told Mrs. Thomas, We're going to have a visitor, but don't tell Anthony James. Oh, a mystery. I like mysteries because they are fun to solve. Then, again, I don't like mysteries because I don't like not knowing what's going on. So, I waited and waited. A few hours later, the doorbell rang. The visitor turned out to be Garth Tugwell and his father. I really appreciate this, Mr. Tugwell told the Thomases. It was Miss Brisbane's idea. Since Garth can't have Humphrey at our house right now, she, su she suggested that he could help AJ take care of him over here. Sounds like Mrs. Brisbane as if I'm troubled to take care of. But Garth had been crying because he couldn't have me. So maybe, maybe she was trying to be nice. After Mr. Tugwell left, Mr. Thomas called AJ in. AJ ran into the room and, practic and practically backed out again when he saw Garth. We have a guest, said Mr. Thomas. Shake hands, Anthony. Garth is here to help you take care of Humphrey. A.J. and Garth reluctantly shook hands. How come? asked A.J. How come? asked A.J. Garth shrugged his shoulders. Mrs. Brisbane, Mrs. Brisbane said too. Well, come on, we'll clean his cage and get it over with, A.J. said. The boys didn't talk much while they cleaned the cage, but they started giggling when they cleaned up my potty corner. I don't know what, why that makes everybody giggle. After they stopped giggling, they started talking and kidding around. They decided to let me out of the cage, so they took a set of old blocks from Dee Dee's room and built me a huge maze. Oh, I love mazes. Stop and think. Theme. AJ learns a lesson when Garth comes to his house. What message does their friend does their new friendship teach? When we were all tired of the of that game, AJ offered to teach Garth to play crazy eights, and then Ty and Dee joined them in a game to, of go fish. Nobody mentioned the TV. Nobody shot any rubber bands. Later in the afternoon, the kids were all outside playing football. I was fast asleep until Mrs. Thomas came into the den with a broom and started sweeping. A minute later, Mr. Thomas entered. What are you doing, hon? What does it look like? I'm sweeping. You know, all the snacking we do in here makes a real mess on the floor, she said. Was asleep? Her husband, her husband asked. Aha. Uh -huh. Mr. Thomas, Thomas walked over to his wife and took the broom away from her. Then you sit down and rest a spell, hon. I'll sweep. Go on, don't argue. Mrs. Thomas smiled and thanked him and sat down on the couch. Mr. Thomas swept all around the outside of the room, even behind the TV. Oh, when he got there, he stopped sweeping and leaned down. Well, I'll be, he muttered. What's wrong? asked Mrs. Thomas. The TV is unblocked, he said. It's unblocked. He came out from behind the TV, plug in hand and a very puzzled look on his face. But it couldn't have just come unblocked while we were sitting there watching. I mean, a block doesn't just fall out, he said. Plug it in, see if it works, his wife told him. Well, you guessed it. The TV came on as bright and loud as ever. I don't get it, Mr. Thomas muttered, but at least we don't have to pay to get it fixed. Mrs. Thomas stared at the screen for a few seconds, then glanced out the window at the kids playing happily outside. Charlie, would you say we... What do you say we keep it unblocked for a couple more days, she asked. We just won't tell the kids. Mr. Thomas grinned, then he bent down and unplugged the TV. Couldn't hurt, he said. 
He put down the broom and sat on the couch near his wife, and the two of them just sat there in the den, giggling like well, like stop giggling gay. Suddenly, Mr. Thomas looked over at me. You don't mind the little beast and quiet, do you, Humphrey? No, 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 I squeaked, and I promptly fell asleep. Now it's your turn. Power failure. Write a response. The Thomas family lose power of their TV for a short time. Choose another electrical device that you rely on, such as a personal computer, a washing machine, or a refrigerator. What would you do if this device stopped working? Write a paragraph describing how you would handle this, the situation. TV time out. Make a calculation. With a partner, calculate how many hours you spend watching TV and playing video games in one week. Start by estimating how many hours you spend on the, these activities in one day. Once you have figured out the total, brainstorm some other ways you could spend the time. that time. Turn and talk. What's the message? What lesson does the Thomas family learn after Humphrey unplugs the TV? With a partner, discuss the lesson or theme expressed in the world in the world according to Humphrey. Be sure to use details from the story to support your thoughts. Then, talk about how you might use this lesson in your own life. And now, we've come to the end of our session today. I hope you liked the lesson. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and share the videos with your friends. Thank you, dear. Bye.